Karthik Kumar, co-founder of SatSearch. Tell us about SatSearch. What is it that SatSearch is trying to address? So we're building uh, the global marketplace for space. Um, what this actually means is uh, what we're trying to do is make the market much more transparent. We're indexing the entire global supply chain. It means all of the suppliers, products and services that are available across the globe, uh, including satellite systems, ground systems, launch systems, uh, and really to digitalize the supply chain. That's the core part of our mission. That sounds, whenever you say global, it sounds huge. Yeah, and it is. <laughs> so what uh, the industry is itself fairly niche uh -huh. uh, on one side, but on the other side, um, you know, our, our estimates back then of calculations based on what we've already indexed, there are actually over 10,000 suppliers to the space industry around the world. These are uh, suppliers who've you know, been involved in space for decades up to new startups, but they're split geographically across you know, North America, Europe, India, China, Japan, and new spacefaring nations like UAE. Mm -hmm. um, so, so when we talk about global, we're literally talking about the entire planet. Indeed, yeah. <coughs> when I mean, you say indexing, so this is going to be a digital platform? Indeed. Uh, so the platform's been live from day one. We actually uh, started at a hackathon um, here in the city of Bremen. Um, and in fact, it was a thought experiment that led to this. So uh, I'm a space engineer myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, what led to this was my own realization of the amount of time I was spending trying to Google for information about the parts, components, subsystems, right. instead of focusing on the really tough engineering challenges. Uh -huh. So um, the idea with uh, this project was to look at you know, the way consumers, for instance, even uh, find uh, laptops today, mm -hmm. phones, it's pretty seamless, you know, a few clicks and you find information on Amazon or any of these comparison websites. So the thought experiment was simply if you can do that and everyone is aware of how that works, yeah. why in the space industry are we stuck in the Stone Age where people are working <laughs> with documents, paper, yeah. So the digitalization is really to bring that online indeed and to kind of mirror the way people in their everyday life discover products and services. So it's, it's the, the idea is to streamline the process of discovery and actually find what you want through, uh, is it fair, I mean it's not going to be a, the best of analogies like all analogies, but is it a bit like a yellow pages you're producing for? <laughs> Uh, a little bit, it's a bit richer than that, mm -hmm. so the right. traditional yellow pages is, you know, listing companies and right. sort of what I would call metadata, so uh -huh. uh, high level information. Right. Uh, we go down to really small, fine details, down to individual uh, parameters of, of a product, so for instance the mass of a thruster or a star tracker. Right. I see. That means that we're able to do really interesting things mm -hmm. uh, with our analytics. Uh -huh. It tells us, you know, what's out there in the supply chain, what are the different characteristics. How is the market changing? Right. So if I'm buying, if I'm developing a satellite and I want to buy a star sensor or a, an A to D converter, then I would come to Sat Search Portal, if I can call it that. Yeah, it's a website. It's website. It's a, it's a website. And then what you're saying by that richer content is I'll be able to download the data sheets for these individual components. Exactly. So we started with the very long info, which is that as an engineer today. There's no single resource until we arrived on the scene where you could find all of these data sheets. And these are typically PDF documents that suppliers generate. They all look different. They pretty much all have uh, different uh, ways of presenting information and even different uh, characteristics of the products that we present. And are you uh, including uh, products, si systems, subsystems, and services? Absolutely, it? actually, indeed, absolutely everything, everything that touches the space industry, we're indexing. Um, it started for us with the goal of trying to get all of these uh, hardware products included, but we noticed as well there's a huge services part of the industry, um, and we're indexing all of that as well because it's as difficult to find that as it is actually you know, the products themselves. Right, so who's, who are your clients? Are they the individual end users or the actual uh, companies and manufacturers who make the products and services. Yeah, so, so what we're really uh, working towards is this idea that uh, data is getting freer every day. You know, the internet is making knowledge available across uh, the globe uh, at a speed of light. <laughs> so um, our uh, value proposition is that this kind of information is not something that you can put behind a wall garden. Mm -hmm. It means that for the users, we're freeing this data. Right. It is indeed free to access the website and also 
on the tools that we built, uh -huh. where this data is integrated into. Right. Be and, and where our business model is predicated on is the fact that um, a lot of suppliers spend a lot of money today to go, for instance, to conferences, set up booths. Right. And what they're doing, literally, is prospecting for potential customers and uh -huh. partnerships, but by handing out documents and handing out business cards. Right. By being in digital, there's a much richer context that you can give them about what's going on in the market, mm -hmm. where the market's heading. Uh -huh. um, so, so our business model is basically toward buying down the cost of things like customer acquisition right. uh, on the supply side. So the suppliers, to put it very simply, the suppliers are uh, our target customers. Okay, so presumably um, you're not building essentially one asset, one da big database of all the components and products and services, but presumably your your uh, such search service will link in to the inventory of individual suppliers. Is that how it will work? Um, so uh, we do have something like a master database, which right. is where we are aggregating information. What we're doing, and, and uh, that's been uh, actually very interesting to see over the last three to six months, is uh, through our traction, through, the, through our traction, the users who are basically coming to our site and using the site, uh -huh. there's more and more suppliers who are uh, interested in getting their products listed. So. Right now, they provide us with the data and we put it in the database. Um, as we grow as a startup, there will be more and more tooling that we provide with suppliers to manage their products and services and information about missions that they fly on the suppliers. Now, if you, if you bring it in your database, you know, the problem that most suppliers have is keeping it up to date and current Absolutely. and consistent. So now is that task is over to you. Is that something you have to do now? Is that a bit more, a bit more challenging? It, it, I mean, to, to bootstrap anything like this, yeah. I mean, yeah. There was a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears that went into really getting this off the ground. But one of our main focuses yeah. is building very strong supplier relationships. So right. one of my co-founders, his, his entire mandate within the startup is to build these very strong supplier relationships right. where we show them that what we're doing is building a win-win situation, right. uh -huh. whereby it's their, to their advantage to be for providing us updated information. Uh -huh. In fact, at the start of this week, uh, we actually launched our verified supplier program right. with the intention of solidifying these relationships and okay. uh, through that building commitment from the suppliers uh, to deliver us that data. And as we make that easier by building tools, uh -huh. it'll be as simple as a click of a button to update the information that's available. Right, so who's, who's doing the verifying in the verifying, verification process? So at this stage, the verification is pretty uh, nominal, I would say. So mm -hmm. we're, we, it, verification at this stage from our supplier side is that we verify uh, through the fact that we have a contact person and mm -hmm. a supplier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's actually an expression of intent from the supplier yeah. side to engage yeah. with us to uh -huh. get their products and services right. data. So it's simply the verification of the fact that the supplier is working closely with right. us. Uh -huh. And that's the signal that we provide to users, so that users just know this is a supplier working for us. And I'm guessing you bring your own professional expertise and experience with, between the whole team on something in the way of due diligence on that individual supplier. You, you'll have that knowledge anyway. Yeah, so, so we are able to, of course, assess what the suppliers are providing, but uh, you know, we're working in concert with the suppliers, and as we develop the program further, mm -hmm. we will tap into these kinds of things to uh -huh. be able to get users uh, really trustworthy, credible information about suppliers, uh -huh. um, whereby the suppliers also understand that that's a win. Right. So it's kind of working through that process to sure. build the yeah. relationship so the supply side understands. Right. And, and I know as a startup, usually um, growth is the most important factor at this stage. Um, you said already that you don't charge customers for using it, or you don't use don't charge people for using the, the front end to search and do the discovery of whatever product or service they're looking for. What about um, suppliers? Do, is, is that how you will get paid? Or is that how you are, are getting paid at the moment? Yeah, so the best analogy I can give you for this is so suppliers can list their products and services for free mm -hmm. on the platform. They can send us updates. Essentially, you should look at the platform itself as being like a buffet. Right. So it's a buffet, it's self-serve, so if you'd like to self-serve, the platform's there. Uh -huh. But of course, we bring a lot of expertise right. with the data that's there, plus our own professional network. That means that if a supplier, for instance, that wants to map out the market in Japan for promotion subsystems, uh -huh. they could do that through our platform, using the search tools. Right. But they could also engage us commercially and say, you know what, I just need an answer to this question, and I don't want to have somebody in my team just sitting doing this work, since you are 
the people behind the platform, yeah. would you be able to yeah. conduct that? Okay. So right. we have a few commercial engagements okay. coming that are in this line. Okay. And that's how we sort of build our model. Our comparative advantage is that we have the data and we know the data yeah. and we're able to leverage that then to deliver business intelligence. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's where the value that you will bring, uh, which doesn't exist at the moment. And so we'll never really be practical or possible for SAP search to be selling the products because the, uh, that's a relationship or the, the, the transaction will be between the purchaser and the end uh, company that's ma making it. Yeah, so I'd, I'd never say never in the sense <laughs> that we've had this question about uh, you know, commission-based transactions and things like that. I think what is important for us is to not jump the gun and understand the real needs of the suppliers. Right. One of the things we do already, for instance, is through the tool, um, you can request more information from suppliers. Uh -huh. And we're standardizing and streamlining the way suppliers receive these leads. Right. So they're kind of qualified leads. Uh -huh. but we believe that the more qualification goes with these leads, the more value also there is to the supplier, to the point where that's monetizable as well. Mm -hmm. Essentially, that's buying down the customer acquisition cost at the right. top of the funnel. Yeah. So, so there's kinds of things like that where we're building, and commission could be down here in the, in the line of things that we build. Mm -hmm. It's just we've learned uh, over the last couple of years to take it step by step right. and to do this in concert with the suppliers so that we understand that we are adding value to them mm -hmm. rather than creating friction uh, along the path. Okay, and uh, in these early days you still consider yourself as a startup. Um, can you just give us an outline of how big is the company, when it started, how many suppliers or uh, products you have available? Sure. So, so uh, we're actually three co-founders. Mm -hmm. so myself, uh, Alberto, who's our uh, so I'm in charge of user and product. Mm -hmm. uh, Alberto is, in, is our software developer. He's in charge of the actual tech stack and the architecture of the system. Uh -huh. And uh, Narain is in charge of the supplier relationships. It's very important supply side uh, right. relationships we're building up. Yeah. So between the three of us, we're now being incubated in the European Space Agency's incubation center in North Lake in the Netherlands. Uh -huh. The project actually started mid-2015 at a hackathon, as I oh, right. mentioned previously, yeah, yeah. Uh, and a thought experiment. Right. Uh, we got a lot of very good feedback there, we won one of the prizes. We spent oh, the remainder of 2015 mm -hmm. doing some market research, just trying to figure out is this, a, is this something more than a weekend hack? Mm -hmm. And formally, to the start of 2016 is when we realized that there's much more to this, right. and there's a big challenge to be solved, right. but we started the project. So it's been going on three years that we've been uh, working on this. Right. Um, we now have, after doing a lot of groundwork, mm -hmm. we've got over 700 suppliers listed in the platform right. and over 5,000 products and services. Mm -hmm. uh, this is growing on a daily basis. Yeah. And we've also got, uh, on average, about 1,000 unique users per month mm -hmm. from all over the world, ranging from students to NASA and ESA engineers right. searching on the platform. Okay. And our goal is really growth, uh, as yeah. I mentioned previously. So it's yeah. to grow the database, grow the products and services, grow the number of users, grow the suppliers who are involved in the platform, to build that network effect actually within the system. So, making some progress there by the sounds of it. What about, uh, if I can ask you about the platform, uh, you're developing this, um, what's the, the front end? What's the where you, where is this hosted? For example, is it on a cloud-based service? Yeah, so we're hosted on Amazon Web Services. Mm -hmm. So we use uh, the typical cloud-based uh, infrastructure um, with all of the let's say the security provisions that go with uh, hosting in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, believe that that's the right place to be right now because it allows us to scale the systems pretty rapidly. Yeah, uh, uh -huh. we're also. Uh, very much a data play, uh -huh. so these kinds of systems are well equipped with you know, uh, plug and play database systems. And, right. like and, and how many people have got developing the, the back end? So Alberto is the lead, lead on this, on yeah. uh, I, I code as well, right. uh, but uh, he sort of takes the lead and I uh -huh. code with him, so right. we're, let's say, two technical co-founders in the team and Narin is really in charge of the ecosystem development and the yeah. partnerships that, that we're building. And presumably this is... Uh, uh, you said the platform has been live from the get-go, so it's available for anybody, anywhere. Yeah. It's on the web, so it's online? Yeah, so yeah. it's on satsearch.co. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just go on the website, it's open, you can search. Right. Um, interestingly, uh, we've also started building, because of uh, our uniqueness of what we're doing with the data itself, mm -hmm. we're mapping it to this highly unstructured data to structured form. Right. And that allows us to serve it not just through the database, uh, through the website, uh -huh. but also through our API. Right. 
this API is uh, really interesting because it's allowing us to integrate it into commonly used engineering tools. Right. Meaning right. that the engineer actually can encounter this kind of data and work right. with it, right. potentially without ever leaving their engineering right. environment. Okay, so this is the um, application program interface. Yes. So your API, presumably, will be interacting with APIs from other customers or other companies so that you can get the um, technical information from other repositories without the user being aware of the fact that all this is happening at the back end. So it um, sounds as if the kind of um, your, your design approach is to have these interfaces with large companies, maybe even national <laughs> space agencies, so you can hook, hook up into their yep. backends? So, so we have had a lot of uh, interest, in fact later today I'm meeting with one of the large primes, uh -huh. uh, because uh, as we're building traction it's becoming more obvious that uh -huh. you know, the future is going in this direction. It's more digitalization, it's right. more leveraging software for uh -huh. everything from supply chain management to design right. to manufacturing. Uh -huh. So um, we don't discriminate in that sense. Every user is valuable to us, everyone right. who arrives on the yeah. site. Uh -huh. And we do actually have people from space agencies using right. uh, the tools. Um, uh -huh. We've talked to them, we need to understand why, what benefit it is to them. Um, but basically it's in some way, if you want to put a tile, put a buzzword on it, it's kind of democratizing access to this. So we don't differentiate between an agency, mm -hmm. an engineer, and a student, okay. you know, and everything in between. Um, yeah, but one of the issues that I always find with the supply chain is that individual companies tend to be associate their commercial capital. They tend to be um, very sensitive about letting the public know who their suppliers might be. Are you finding that uh, challenging? So the interesting thing is, um, to some degree, yes. But I think that's because what is happening here is sort of a mindset shift. Yeah. And, and we're part of that movement. And I think what we've learned to do is to uh, take away that fear by explaining that this is really uh, executing on what their strategy is already. To be. It just so happens to be that traditionally they're used to giving out these booklets uh -huh. and leaflets. And it's, it, it, to start with the information that's in that already, it serves a huge purpose for that to be digital. Now, of course, as we build those relationships and we're taking that kind of information and showing suppliers how that benefits them to get that into users' hands quickly, mm -hmm. we're also convincing them that the more information they provide, the more users are able to interact with it, yeah. and the shorter the sales cycle is potentially mm -hmm. for them as well. So uh, that's an ongoing discussion, and I, I think we're kind of at the forefront of that. Yeah. So it is a little bit of uh, push and pull. Yeah, I think you'll probably get to that tipping point when they will come to you because that's, that's exactly. the place to go. In fact, I would say the last few months have been particularly going in that direction. Uh -huh. right. More and more suppliers are coming to us and yeah. interacting with us. Uh, there's still a lot more work to be done in that direction, but we're at least seeing that uh -huh. uh, instead of this being theoretical, by being out in the wild mm -hmm. and having a usage, is kind of de-risking the proposition for suppliers. Right. They're understanding that we're not here to kind of ruin their businesses. Yeah. This is really about added value. Uh -huh. and, and that's sort of slowly percolating through the supply chain. Right. Two things about, again, the global concept you're working to. Um, you talk about Japan, China, uh, European, of course, we have loads of languages here. Is your platform uh, taking account of the different languages or is it currently only in English? So we are only in English at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a, a need for internationalization and localization. Yeah. Um, a startup being the size that we are, we're very resource constrained, so yeah. this is on the roadmap for uh -huh. sure. And we think that is really important because you do have a wealth of engineers who don't necessarily communicate in English but have very uh, intelligent ideas, mm -hmm. very good uh, you know, concepts that they're developing. Right. Japan having just uh, you know, landed a couple of landers on an asteroid is yeah. a good example of entire ecosystems that are unto themselves really mm -hmm. important as part of the space sector. So uh, it's on the roadmap too. Localize. Yeah, and it seems to be an integral part of the general move towards international collaboration, where something like this would be an ideal tool for everyone to benefit. Um, the other thing about globalization, as you know, this year in the in, the, in Europe here, we've had the, the general data protection regulation. You'll be dealing with um, individual suppliers or customers, usernames and addresses, and so all of this is considered 
in the EU as personal data, so subject to the GDPR. Um, are you um, cognizant of that? Is your platform Absolutely. taking care of... Uh, uh, are you complying with GDPR? Yeah, so GDPR is of course a really important shift, and I think it's a shift for the benefit. So we are very cognizant of it. In fact, one of the benefits for us to be in the Pacific Incubation Center is that they have a series of partners that right. include accountants, lawyers, uh, and people who have, for instance, knowledge of the legal implications and the way to implement GDPR the right way. It turns out that even before GDPR arrived, when we started the project, we had already implemented measures that were recommended by GDPR. So for instance, separation of personal data from other data, the ability to you know, delete your account and be forgotten, as it were, uh -huh. within the system. Right. Uh, so we are GDP com uh, GDPR compliant, and right. interestingly, we had only a very small shift to make from what we had already set up on the tech side, yeah. uh, because naturally we had actually kind of implemented the measures that are uh, anonymized data, uh -huh. and statistics, and things like that, right. and at the same time keep this PII sort of uh, separate and independent of personal identifiable information. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you, if I was to say to you, uh, what is it that Sat, Sat Search IPR intellectual property? Uh, is what, what is what is it that you're producing? Is it the algorithms? Is it a platform? Is it a backend? So I think that's a really interesting question because we do open a lot, so the data itself is free yeah. and open, right? Yeah. Uh, we are, we're also very pro um, uh, interacting with people in an open, transparent mm -hmm. manner. Yeah. So that even the standards that we're developing under the hood to capture data in an electronic format, mm -hmm. those are you know things we share freely because I think it's important for industry adoption. Those kinds of things are open yeah. if everyone. Mm -hmm develops their own standard, there is no standard. Uh -huh. So the IPR really rests in, firstly, how we model the data under the hood. Uh -huh. um, but secondly, also, it's just uh, the network effect of having a lot of users, a lot of suppliers uh, interacting through the system. So mm -hmm. in the traditional sense of a marketplace, this is why we call ourselves a marketplace. That's well. right. Uh -huh. We're an internet startup that is yeah. bringing two parties together, yeah. and we have the network effect uh, that emerges from that. So. Mm -hmm. So, so we're not patenting anything, we're not, because the, the core of it is the fact that we are building that network. Yeah, and this, in, in this service. Yeah. 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 And that's uh, quite novel these days. Usually the first thing people want to do is, you know, get some patents out and make sure that they, they identify and secure what uh, they were working Well, we're with. confident in the fact that the innovation that we're bringing, which comes with how we model the data, how we serve the data, mm -hmm. um, intrinsically protects the, our, our, our business, plus the fact that um, through content strategy, through the web, uh, we can execute what startups in Silicon Valley and elsewhere have been doing for the last 20, 25 years. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel in that uh -huh. sense. And in that sense, it's a bit of spin in bringing a lot of the modern web technologies and things like that into the space sector. Talking about modern web technology, one of the many buzzwords is machine learning. Yeah. Particularly when it comes to searching for something, it seems to be one of the uh, things that can be really useful. And that's evolved to something that's really useful and practical these days. Is that something you're hoping to integrate into the platform? Absolutely. In fact, touching on this, uh, to go a little bit deeper into mm -hmm. the tech, what our, uh, uh, what our advantage is, is the way we are modeling the data in a knowledge graph. So uh -huh. we're developing a language and ontology for space systems. Right. Uh, but by doing this, we make the data also accessible to algorithms. Right. So we're in fact in a, uh, a partner in a European Space Agency project that's being led by the University of Strathclyde. Uh -huh. And they're developing an AI-based system right. to uh, support an engineer during the design process. Right. Because an engineer has a lot of different considerations in uh, a typical mission. Uh -huh. um, and so by using all of this data, uh -huh. um, having effectively a design it, engineering assistant yeah. kind of help the engineer uh, rapidly you know, walk through the options of uh, how the system needs to be developed. Mm -hmm. So we're leveraging, let's say, our data through partnerships like that to do intelligent search, search and uh, intelligent yeah. matchmaking. It's, uh, if I can ask you to speculate, look into your crystal ball, uh, it's, let's say it's 2028, 20, 10 years from now, where's that search? That's a really good question. I think uh, the w there's a very direct way that I describe this. So I think uh, the way I would put it is, SAT search has become a verb. 
Okay. <laughs> By that, what I mean is people today, they Google, they Uber, yeah. they Airbnb. And I think for us to really succeed will be the moment when engineers, suppliers all talk about us in an action set. So we'll uh -huh. SAT search it or, you know, I'm uh, looking uh, in a, to SAT search something. Mm -hmm. So for us, that means that we become a de facto standard. Right. It's this independent, neutral resource that provides uh, an overview of the entire landscape of the space industry and plugs into all aspects of the mission life cycle, whether it's engineering, procurement, business development. Um, that, that would be the recipe for success uh, for us uh, 10 years from now. Uh, Karthik Kumar, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.